Caddis Maximus here. I gotta replace my garbage disposal. The shaft seal inside started leaking. There's actually water dripping out right through the electrical hole or where the, elect the power cable comes in. Figure I'd just do a quick install video. This is the Home Depot Supply. HD Supply is Home Depot's uh, like commercial supply uh, subsidiary and you know they kind of sell some okay stuff and some cheesy stuff. This is a bottom of the barrel half horsepower disposal but it was assembled in the USA part 405 num or 405 750 so we're gonna do the easy install where we don't install this flange there'll be some tools that you need like needle nose pliers to deal with the wires uh, a big screwdriver because the way the disposal mounts to the flange on the bottom of the sink uh, preferably an electrically insulated screwdriver just for extra safety to actually uh, screw down the terminals for those who might need a Phillips uh, surprisingly enough, there's me, there's Caddison's claw hammer, and you may need a claw hammer because the bottom flange is actually a twist on. That's why you also would like a large screwdriver. Uh, but it's after a disposal's been on there for years and years, uh, you may have to give it a hit on the back of the screwdriver to drive it off. And an electrical tester just to verify that the power is indeed off even after you turn off the breaker and, of course, the switch for the disposal itself. It, extra safety you always want to uh, make sure you uh, have no juice there otherwise it's gonna be a big issue forgot a couple of things you may want a uh, work light of some type preferably a flood and then safety glasses and this isn't so much for the par uh, particles flying in your eyes that might have enough force to physically injure your eyeball it's more because it's an old disposal and you're working with some drain fittings there might be some splashes of uh, unknown yuckies and you don't want those getting that kind of stuff getting in your eyes so I do recommend safety glasses for this kind of situation anyway let's unbox this thing it's pretty cheesy uh, I did cover up the name here we have a little uh, installation manual which we'll probably want to uh, maybe take a quick look at other than that now one thing we'll want to mention here we go this one did come with a stopper is this is the flange that goes into the bottom of the sink and many times you won't end up replacing that they come with this type of uh, fiber gasket and many times that really doesn't seal perfectly and then you have to end up getting in there and using some silicone and if this mounting assembly should be standardized and this is you can see the angle of the steel here so the whole uh, assembly will twist onto this this should be the same as what's already on your sink this part Almost, is almost impossible for it to wear out unless it's really dinged up then you may want to replace it. but usually it's not worth the hassle if yours is okay and it's not leaking and you can just remove the drain pipe the wire and un, uh, untwist the old motor and twist the new one back on and so that's a decision you'll have to make finish with this unboxing here's our disposal it does come with one fitting here which is a 90 degree angle mine straight so we'll have to see if I have to reuse it there is something else down in here interestingly enough this box was sealed I haven't been inside this box but when they were stuffing the other stuff in there it ended up pushing its little protective bag oh I see they they only put the protective bag on the bottom which is really odd I just don't understand this so there's our bag, here's our disposal, this ring floats, and this is just what uh, twists on. And then they have these holes where you can use a metal rod or a screwdriver uh, to twist it on and to also just hit the side of them lightly with a hammer to uh, cinch it up. One thing to remember is you want to keep this surface right here clean is this uh, protruding ring is actually what provides the seal from the uh, motor to the bottom of the sink flange. So in my situation, I have to reuse the old pipe, but I will take the seal out of the little kit here and put in the new seal. Not much else going on with this. This is a, not a particularly powerful one. You can spend a ton of money and get like one and two horsepower. I think two and a half horsepower is about the peak I ever I saw. And uh, But this is definitely a cheesy and pretty cheap unit. Where does it say... It is an insincorator, so it's a repackaged insincorator. That's the very, that's like a universal brand. Insincorators is probably one of the best selling in the United States. They're just uh, cheesy, but they seem to work halfway decent. And what does it say? Oh, Racing, Wisconsin. So the same place where Dremels are made. Let's pull this little silicone boot off. For, 
Uh, that does pop off nice and easy. We don't have to remove this. I just want to show inside. Blenders are real simple. It's just a motor bolted to a plate. It has these things right here, which are just little swing weights. When it's on, the heavy portion of the weight causes those to swing out and be near the wall. And if I can get if we can get this to focus like that, and that kind of just pounds the food into the slots. When these wear out, what ends up happening is those swing weights end up getting pretty beat up, and then the slots and the walls actually get just get carved out and uh, even are missing. And so it doesn't grind up food it rather than just kind of puts it into a couple chunks and everything always gets clogged. In mine, the case is, is the shaft seal that seals the water from the motor portion is, of course, leaking. And we should have, yep, a bottom cover to run the power. It also has another option for you to run a uh, sheath cable, the cable and the uh, flexible metallic housings. It's always a good idea to check. Uh, a long time ago, I was installing one of these, and some part of one of the accessories also ended up inside it during shipping. So it is a good idea to take a look inside when these things are new. Anyway, I've blabbed away too much as usual. I'm going to go turn the breaker off and we'll get started on this. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is uh, remove this bottom plate here. And even though we turned off the circuit breaker and made sure the switch doesn't work, we're going to do this extra safe. We can see how much junk was building up under there. That was not a good situation. Now they are using wire nuts in, up in there, so I'm going to actually use one of these uh, non-contact type voltage testers because it'll be easier and I'm going to jam it around in there just to make sure that we don't have any uh, beeps. And it definitely looks like we're okay. You will want some needle nose pliers. You actually may want to pick up one of these things in case yours, the previous person didn't put one in. We do have a, you know, a cord pinch there or cord retainer but you may have to get one of these because it doesn't come with it and we're actually going to need a little 3 8 ratchet on top of the other tools that I showed in there now let's and some new wire nuts get these wire nuts out of there it's much easier with some needle nose pliers now there isn't a separate ground wire. The ground wire that comes in through here is actually screwed in a little cross screw. I shouldn't be explaining so much on about the one that I'm removing, even though it's the same one that we have. That screw is a little corroded. Sometimes Phillips really aren't very good in these situations. That's why these screws have both slot head and Phillips. Slot head really, in many situations, just has a lot more grab. It's just a flat blade in the slot. I know about GIS, but all that, you know, kind of is irrelevant with the slot head. You'll have a slot head. We'll get that screw is actually pretty corroded. Not a happy little camper right there. Come on now. Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get. Now we have to untangle or release that ground wire. There we go. Now these are of course, this thing is of course turned the wrong direction. Do yourself a favor and uh, when you put these in, make sure that the screws on the cord pinch are facing outwards and towards you so that you can uh, actually access them without having to come around the back like this. Let me, uh, let me see what those use. Even more lovely, these are slot head. I think I, the one I got it's combination slot head Phillips, so we'll actually be replacing this antiquated one. Now slot head, of course, is horrible when you're trying to power drive or do a situation like this because there's, of course, nothing that retains it. There are some oddball slot head screwdrivers. But that attempt to hold in, but they just don't work too well. Let's see here. Anyway, we're going to unscrew this quite a bit. Get... Oh, that just turned off. 
I want to put on some uh, new wire nuts. I don't really like these. These are some pretty low quality wire nuts here. I'll may all this blabbing. I may end up. Oh wow! There's a bunch of corrosion. Yikes! That is no good. wire back out. <sighs> what a hassle. Hold on. I had my flashlight on low the whole time and that's why it was flickering on the video. How special is that? Anyway. I am not going to reinsert the wire. We just need to get rid of some of this junk. Get these little bolts out of here. It may get a little yucky under here, so I am going to put a little rag. Once you break these, they usually get just hand tied afterwards. You may want to put a rag down so that it doesn't, uh, anything that leaks out or spills, won't cause too much of a disaster. These older bolts actually look higher quality than the newer bolts. This whole piece here with its flanges looks like it's all captured and I may not be able to do anything with it. Meaning I'm going to have to you know, keep uh, this whole old flange. So we do have a few drips there. Now sometimes these you can just grip. Oh, it moved a little bit. And a lot of times that's all it takes. And there she goes. And there's your sink. Don't use the sink when it's like this. This is where it gets fun reinstalling it because you got to get the whole unit. This is like an additional drain or a dishwasher inlet. That's what that is or a dishwasher drain inlet. It by default comes blocked. There's actually a plastic kind of cap that's molded and you actually have to punch in that cap if you have a dishwasher and you need want it to drain this is the input into the disposal where you can do that so usually uh, it's always a come on there just try to get it to where the teeth are hanging so you're not just under it now I need that darn seal these seals are super squishy, and let's see if I can get this whole thing to cooperate enough there. Let's get that seal in there. And this is the, the hard part is actually tightening this up because you got to keep this still. You also have to make sure that it's really square. If this tube is, you know, cantered off to one side or the other, it won't seal and it'll leak, and that's always a hassle. So you got to get that all just as perfect as you can get it. Hold that, and then get your large screwdriver and use these little tabs to. Cinch it down just like so. That actually worked out pretty well. It kind of felt like it notched. Yeah, it did. There's little stubs, and you can feel it. It'll come to a stop. It'll kind of notch it like there's a detent there, and then it won't go anymore. And you can feel on top. You can feel with your finger the little tab, the ledge that sits on. You can feel it's right next to the edge, the back side of that ledge, so you know that's sealed up properly. Next thing to do is just to tighten down the flange. We'll reuse the old bolts. Is it actually looked better, and since it's the same brand and everything, the threads and every, all that should be exactly the same, and they feel like they are. New holes, but uh, this one threads in fine. The threads in that hole aren't super happy. And we'll torque this down. There it goes, almost. Kind of doing two stages, get both sides kind of cinched, and then I'm 
Let me pause this here. Now these bolts are only in plastic and they only feed in about 10 millimeters, 8 millimeters or so. So it's just until they cinch up. Just put a little bit of pressure. There's not water pressure, it's just water that drains out. So you don't over torque them. It's really a shame if you uh, strip those out. Now the cord retainer doesn't use the nut. It actually threads into the bottom, which explains why I was pointing backwards on the old one. And it looks like we're probably going to be in the same situation here. No, it's off to the side, so, whoop, you can't even see that. There we go. There's our cord retention. It's right here. And on this one, it's off to the side, so it's a little easier. So I'm going to pause it, but you got to, since these are solid core conductors, they're always exciting to deal with. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull this back out, put it over the piece of wire, and it'll be easier for me to kind of feed this wire and bend these back over without this thing being in the way and then I'll slide this up the wire and into the hole and then thread it in it, come on yeah see that would have been just a nightmare why is that these uh, solid core wires are always so recalcitrant all right I'm gonna feed this up through the hole here now what I found helps with these kind of wires is you kind of get them in some type of an arc already and then feed it up through there and then you're going to be able to kind of weasel them in here usually i will do the ground wire first just because it's always just such a special experience to try to get it in there what is going on here there come on they of course always give you just like the most minimal amount of space in these things these wires are probably a little bit long but well See, once you kind of get it going, then you get this guy in there, which is always a little more difficult. When... Now, come on. Yes, it's actually starting. Okay. Now you tighten these up. Whoops hit record on that a little bit on each screw you don't want to crush this wire but you just want to have it tight enough so it doesn't want to pull out I mean a pretty good amount of force sometimes you may want to put a layer or two of electrical tape right there I am NOT doing that this time it is double insulated wire it's insulated wire with an outer jacket and that's pretty good well, let's... <sighs> Yeah, it's not looking half bad. You'll feel it. There'll be a little bit of tension on the screws, and it'll be that's all you need. So now do that, and then we'll get those twisted up. I did choose wire nuts that did not have the little wings on them because in these situations, sometimes when you're jamming the wires in such a tight space, the little wings will end up with tension on them and can uh, get a little bit loose over time because there's always some pressure pressing on like the the side of the wing to make it want to unscrew and can cause them to get a little bit loose especially when it's really tight like this where you're using solid core wires you're going to jam them and they always give you like the most microscopic uh place to put those wires uh so i like using wingless wire nuts in this situation the needle nose pliers are really for the ground wire so you can get it twisted at just the right angle and then force it onto that darn screw I don't know why this is so long in the first place. I'll put a new little loop in there. that slot in. Sometimes you got to push up on the bottom of the wire just to get it to seed. I like to make it a loop a little bit long so you can pinch the top to get it to want to hold and then you screw this thing in. Why do they make the... See the ground screw has like pinch threads. 
wow, this screwdriver is not working. So that you won't accidentally unscrew it all the way, but it always ends up making them kind of tough sometimes to screw back in like this. There we go, my lord. You think manufacturers would figure out a better way than... There's no way you'd be doing this with a Phillips. You just strip that thing right on out of there. And I wouldn't recommend an impact driver because it's a good way to blow out the screw. Okay, we got all that together. We just want to run a little bit of water to make sure there's no leaks. Especially dripping out of the, the upper tube that's up here. Uh, let's see if it works. All right, let's hear it run. All right, it's nice and solid. One more time from up here. Anyway, that's how easy, uh, it's a little bit, but how easy it is to replace a garbage disposal. And uh, thought it was a good little video to make. They're usually pretty this simple. Usually this simple. There's a, quite a few of these videos on YouTube, but uh, but just wanted to show how easy it is just for any lay person to even do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Catus Maximus out.